So good morning everybody. Good morning. Ah, little Lord, good morning everybody. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day. It's good to be back. We were away for a weekend last week. We had a great time. But today we are here and I just want to encourage you with a quick word of the Lord. And uh, this is from Mark 6, verse 30 and 31. And it says that the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, and they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Now, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Now my thought is this morning, I don't know what's on your mind, I don't know, maybe you even have done things for the Lord, and maybe you have been busy, maybe things have been happening this week, maybe so many things you have planned that you did, and I believe it's a little bit like that, the Lord is calling us this morning, even though it's a church where we sing, and we make quite a bit of noise, I believe it's still a place, a place where we could feel rest and quiet in our souls. When we hear the Holy Spirit, when we hear songs, when we worship, when we hear the Word, a quietness comes in. So my, the, the Lord is trying to, probably calling you this morning and He's saying, come with me by yourselves to your quiet place and get some rest. If you're tired, if you're bothered, if you're occupied in your mind, Jesus said, come to me and I'll give you rest. And he's calling this morning again for us to enter that place. Maybe a quiet place. Maybe something that you're going to do this week by doing your quiet time. Come into a little place. Just with the Lord and have some rest. And maybe this is the morning when we come and we'll come and have rest with him. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we can find rest, Father, even when we sing, when we worship, and even when we hear the word, when we get together, Lord, this is a place of rest, a place of peace, Lord, a place where, where your spirit reigns, and we invite you, Holy Spirit, where you come into our hearts, where you fill us again anew, Lord, with the rest and the peace that only you can give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you invite us to come. Even through a busy schedule, let this be the day that we feel the rest, that we feel the peace, Lord, that we feel, Lord, that you're with us. Bless our worship. Bless our gift of worship that we give to you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
great song to transition into communion now if uh, we could pass out the elements. Let's stay in this, uh, this atmosphere of praise right here. We can, maybe while they're passing the, the emblems out, can we sing this again? Jesus. I depend on you, Jesus. And 
That's the reason he went to the cross. He bared it all for you, for me. He didn't hold back. I hear the Father saying, I gave you my son so that you, that you would have a life and have it life to the full. Lord, I pray for your people that stand here this morning. Lord, I don't know the things that they're walking through, but you do. And Lord, I pray that you're the God of the Most High. That Lord, whatever the circumstances or, or situations that they're going through, Lord, that, Lord, that I pray that you would intervene in their situation and that they would have breakthrough. That they could stand on the mountain, on the mountaintop and declare, my God, my God has delivered me and set me free. We love you, Lord. Maybe where you're standing, maybe you want to tell him that. I love you, Jesus. You are my life, Lord. I am lost and broken without you. Holy Spirit, do a work in my life.
this moment of quiet. Enter that place that invites us to the opening for us. Just take a minute. Talk to him. this morning or that we can be reminded Father who you are and we just want to thank you God that being who you are Father you didn't leave us Father alone you didn't leave a way out Father that we would be wandering and have this inside battle Jesus but you have provided Father your Holy Spirit and you have provided the cross Jesus you have provided for everything we need, Lord, to live a godly life. And God, give us the strength today, God. Oh, God, give us the strength, Jesus, to walk as the way you want us to walk, Jesus. I thank you, God, because we can strengthen one another today, God. As we gather here, God, in your name, Jesus. First of all, most, almost, Lord, that what you have done for us, God. Oh, Father, you've canceled, Father, our dead Jesus. You've canceled our sin, Jesus. You've wiped it out. And we are free, Jesus, because of that. At the same time, Lord, we are here, God, because where will we be without you, Lord? We need you, God. And we came to say to you this morning, Lord, we need you, God. Oh, God, where will we be without you, Lord? Hallelujah. You are powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are welcome into the presence of the Lord. I will thank Him for His presence. And for the confidence we have coming into his presence, he invites us to come anyway. Amen. And the Bible says, Come, that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So we are confident to come. Not that we are perfect to come, but we are just responding to his invitation to come. Just as we are. You don't need to fix yourself before you come. When you come, he will fix you. Amen. Lord, we just thank you. Can we just pray as we go into the world? Father, Lord, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this lovely invitation to come into your presence. Lord, we are not taking it for granted. We are not saying that it's a mark of our holiness or our goodness, but a mark of your goodness. And your love towards us. And we say thank you. And Lord, as we come, Lord, we expect to hear from you. We expect you to talk to us, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to challenge us, to make us what you want us to be, to remind us of maybe what we have forgotten. And we say thank you. And Lord, as we go into your world, let the entrance of your world bring light and understanding. Let it bring encouragement. Let it not be hindered, O oh God, in any way. 
not even from me, bringing me the cross. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's always interesting for me if I, if I had the privilege to share the word on a, holy, uh, on a communion day. Because it's, it's, it just, as the Bible said, do this in remembrance of me. It just brings back to my, shall I say, understanding again or memory again what the great price he paid to make us what we are in him. Yeah. And that for me is huge. It's huge. It's huge. A price that we could not pay. He paid it because of his love towards us. And for me, that's the turning point of my confidence in everything. I'm not good. I owe a debt. He chose to pay it, and he said, I should go. For me, it gives me so much joy. It gives me so much confidence. It gives me every reason to worship him. It gives me every reason to seek to please him. And this morning, in line with that, uh, I just have a scripture as a form of introduction before I go into what we have in Ephesians 5, it's not on the slide, verse 8 to 10, it says, For you we are once darkness. I was once darkness. I was once darkness. I remember in those early days of my Christianity when I'm talking to some people and I'm you know, sharing my faith, telling them what I used to be, telling them what I used to be. Some of them will say, well, I've not done much evil like you did. When I do, maybe I'll consider to repent. See? We were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. It's not saying you will be light, it's saying you are. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are light in the world. In one of the gospels, it says that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light. That means your presence ought to illuminate every darkness you come into. You were once darkness, but Bible said, now we are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. This is what we are. It's like saying you are the light. Turn it on. Say, live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So find out what pleases the Lord. You are one darkness, now you are light. Live as children of light. And he you know, gave, gave us some insight about what that light is. He said it consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now say, find out what pleases the Lord. And this morning, there is just an aspect of what, by His grace, I found out pleases the Lord that I want us to look at. You see, though what the Lord, we need to find out what the Lord wants from us or expects of us in every situation because He has his plan for us. My Bible says, you know, all the days of day for us was written in the book. He has his plan. And having moved from darkness into light, he wants us to live as children of light and be in touch with him to know what pleases him. Both as individuals and for us as a church, we need to find out what the Lord wants us to do. We, are, we shouldn't just live our life with reckless abandon or continue in the way we used to live when we are in darkness. We are no more darkness. You are no more darkness. It doesn't matter what the enemy tried to whisper into your ears. You used to be, but now you are not. And the Bible said, live as children of light. When your past experiences or behavior comes knocking back and say, I am a child of light. I will live as a child of light. When past friends comes to, you know, Bible says, when sinners entice with consent, that not, thou not. Sorry, 
am now a child of light. And my purpose now is to find out what pleases the Lord in my daily walk. And you see, when we find out, maybe from studying the scriptures or from interacting with one another, or when we come into a congregation like this, either through the word of encouragement or even through the worship, or maybe during the um, uh, uh, fellowship with these uh, coffees, and the long drop something in your heart uh, as a result of your conversation with your brother or sister, no, this will please the Lord. Then we aim to do it. And the interesting thing is that whatever he demands of us, he has given us strength to do. That is strength available for every assignment. If I link it to the uh, message we had last Sunday, about the power of the Holy Spirit, which I think was a very brilliant message. If you are in here, please, I will encourage you to go back and you know listen to it again, maybe online. I'm sure it's online now. We have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did not just come unto us and is dormant. He has come unto us and he is powerful. Hallelujah. He's powerful. He reminds us of what pleases the Lord. Bible said he will, he will even encourage us, he will pray with us. He will stir up hope in us. You know, as we are told last Sunday, we are empowered for every assignment. When Jesus uh, was speaking to the disciples about the uh, promise of the Holy Spirit, he told, he told, when they asked, Lord, will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it is the Father's, you know, it is the Father that do handle that, but you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. He told them, you receive power to represent me, so to say. You receive power to testify of me. You receive power to do what you ought to do, that my name will be glorified. And we saw when that power came in Acts chapter 1 that was a new people back. And as the theologian said, the church was part in power. And that day alone, 3,000 were added to the church. And this present day church has the same power. You and I have the same power to do whatever the Lord has asked us to do. It may not be to preach and have 3,000 added in a day, but it's something to not only transform you, but transform those around you as well. Because that's the purpose of God. Right from creation, when God finished creation, God said, He blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. That was His intention. And should I say that that's the aspect of the will of God that by His mercy I have identified, or He has laid in my heart to share with us is the call to be fruitful. That's a call for us to be fruitful. And the good thing is that not only that he called us to be fruitful, he has empowered us to be fruitful. And we don't, we're not supposed to look at our weaknesses, we're not supposed to look at our limitations, we're not supposed to look at our circumstances, but we look on him that has called us. We look on to him that has empowered us. Bible says something concerning Elijah in James. In the, uh, James says something about that. He said, Elijah was a man of like passion, like us. But he prayed that it would not rain for three and a half years. And again, he prayed and it, the rain came after three and a half years. But he's a man with feelings, with passion, with responsibilities, with commitment, but even with weaknesses. At least we saw a glimpse of it when uh, Jezebel tried to him and he ran for his life. He has his own weaknesses, as you and I have. But let not your weakness, or what you have identified as your weakness, let not your circumstances hinder you from being fruitful. Because he has empowered us for whatever he wants us to do. Whatever he's asking you to do this morning, don't say, Lord, how can I do it? As a, 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 a pastor just said in the encouragement, in the encouragement, we only say, Lord, 
strengthen me to do it. Because we see our weaknesses, but he sees what he has made us to be. That song that was saying, said, when we see the battle, he sees it. When we see our limitation, he sees what we can accomplish through his power that is at work in us. The scripture said that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us. The power that made a body that was lifeless to become alive, that same power is at work in you and I. That means every area of our life that in what we might see to be dead, that's the power to quicken that aspect of our life. If only we will believe it, if only we will acknowledge it, if only we will be conscious of it to put it into practice. So, brothers and sisters, that's the call for us to be fruitful. In whatever area the Lord has called you, your area of calling might be different from mine, but we need to be fruitful in it. I will not say because my assignment is not my granddaughter's, just like her. The story we had of the those that were given talents. I will not say because my assignment is not like Randall's, I will not be fruitful in mine until I get Randall's assignment. No. No. That is a call to be fruitful. In John chapter 15, that will be our main text this morning. I will read from verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Can I point that briefly? So that it will be even more fruitful. That tells me it doesn't matter the age, the level of your fruitfulness, there is more. There is more. Don't limit yourself. The power that starts to work in you can accomplish more than you think, if only you can tap into it, if only you can acknowledge it, if only you can believe that what God says or what the scripture says here is true. So that you'll be even more fruitful. More fruitful. Brothers and sisters, as a church, we are marking our fourth year this year, and praise God, we've seen a level of fruitfulness but there is more. We must be conscious that there is more. If not, we will not be believing God for a place of our own. There is more. And that same power that have encouraged us, that have brought us together, that have uh, enabled us to be where we are today, is able to take us to accomplish the more that the Lord wants for us. He is faithful to His word. He will prove us. Things that need to be cut off, He will cut off. Things that would distract us, he can remove. So that we will be more fruitful. Relationships that are dragging you down, it can uh, make to be uh, in a, ineffective anymore to drag you down. Things that you have heard that have made you not to stand on your ground as a child of God, he will deal with that. Things that will make you not to be more fruitful, that will make you to settle for less, to settle for where you are. He will make us see it for what it is, so that we will be more fruitful. That is the pruning. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. That's verse 3. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Praise God. I think that's an encouragement and an assurance that as long as I remain in Him, I have no choice but to fruitful, but to be fruitful. It's only when I think I can do it on my own. It's only when I think that I can isolate myself from Him. It's only when I think that I have known it all that I stop being fruitful. It's only when I cut off from Him not being conscious to know what pleases him. Thinking that I'm okay where I am, I can do without the Lord. That is when we will become unfruitful. And you know what happens? When we get to that stage, the one that we thought we have accomplished will begin to dwindle. 
That's the fact. They begin to lose its relevance because he's no more in it. But when he is in it, as he said, that you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. Someone will say, Ah, there are no, no Christians that are fruitful. You don't know what they are going through, they are just seeing it from the outside. I remember one time I was um, admonishing one of my brothers about, you know, I have this little marriage encouragement. Um, I don't know what to call it, but I was just talk, talking to my brother in one of the sessions, and he said, But our parents didn't behave that way, and their marriage was good. I said, You don't know what our parents were passing through. You were young. I knew. In the actual, when I said that, he became quiet. I said, the truth of the word of God cannot be made of non-effect. It cannot. People's experiences cannot nullify the word. When you go closer, you know that the, abs the absence of the Lord in their life is a huge hole that they cannot fill. Irrespective of what we see from outside, that the saints to be fruitful in our heart. For without him, and for us especially that are Christians, that will not take the route and the path that they took or they are taking, our only source of fruitfulness, of being fruitful, is remaining in him, remaining in the vine. And the good thing is that he's the father that is the gardener, he's the one tending to us. Watering us when we need to be watered. <laughs> Not some of us that have a plant, we forget to water it. <laughs> watering us when we need to be watered. Pruning us when we need to be pruned. Seeing that maybe we might be losing some nutrients and we can apply some fertilizer or whatever we need. He's taking care of us, brothers and sisters, that we will be more fruitful. Let us rejoice in that. Let us be encouraged by that. Verses say, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Some branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Say, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. That's an empty chair there, isn't it? <laughs> this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. That tells me that that's one of our identity as disciples, being fruitful. So showing yourself to be my disciples. It's not just in our saying it, I'm a disciple of the Lord. We show it by being fruitful. We show it by our behavior, by our lifestyle, by what we are doing, by who we are depending on. So show yourself to be myself. And it says that when you do, ask whatever you will. Is the one saying it, not me? For me also, it's an assurance of answer prayer. When you are fruitful, you pray, go and sleep, your prayer is answered. You don't have to worry if it is, because you are acting on this one. Lord, we just thank you. In Matthew 7 from verse 16, Matthew 7 from verse 16, it said, By their fruits, you will recognize them. Though he was talking about the prophets in this context, but the same thing applies to us. If he says in that John that, you know, showing yourself to be my disciples, that means it also applies to us here in Matthew. It said, By their fruits, you recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. That's interesting. 
That means you cannot get back home. Unless you are not seeing yourself to be a little tree. But if we go from what the Lord is saying, that He has made us feel by His word, we have received Him, He has clothed us with the garment of righteousness. If we remain in Him, we are the good tree. Unless you are not in Him, then you'll be in doubt if you are a good tree. But it says, every good tree does bear good fruit. You bear good fruit. Would that be an encouragement or a challenge? You bear good fruit because you are a good tree. Are you a good tree? Sometimes I don't think so. <laughs> but what this word is true. If you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior and you are remaining in him, you are a good tree and you will bear good fruit. You will bear good fruit. We only bear bad fruit when we refuse to remain in Him in any situation. In Him, we are the good tree and we bear good fruit. Amen. Amen. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. That means your presence in a place illuminates the place. You don't need to drive out darkness because before you bring in the light. Just bring in the light and the darkness will flee. You are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. You are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Without you, the earth will be bitter. It will not be sweet. <laughs> That's true. But you must acknowledge that. You must be conscious of that. We must be conscious of that. Hope Church, your presence in enemies is something enemies. Let's be conscious of that. Our prayers, our presence, our outreaches is to let the community test our saltiness. We are sweet. So I do. As long as we remain connected, we'll be fine. And that is how we'll be known. You see? By their fruit, you will recognize them. How do you want to be recognized? In your family, among your friends, at your workplace, how do you want to be recognized? As the light? As darkness? I believe it's not that darkness. You are not darkness. John 15. That's in John 15, verse 16 of it. It says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will do it. Here again, giving that same reassurance. Giving that same blank check. Giving that same assurance of answer prayer. He said, He's the one that chose us. Bible said, why we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's not that we are good, that's why he chose us. No, because he lost us. He chose us. Because he wants to use us to show also his goodness to others. He chose us. And he said, he, we did not choose him, he chose us. And he appointed us. And that translation said, he assigned to us. So that we might go and hear fruit. That's what the Lord desires of us to bear fruit. To be fruitful. He chose us. I said, I'm sure that whatever we are, that means in this assignment he has 
chosen not to accomplish. In this fruit, he has come down to bear whatever we, we need, he supplies, so that we will remain fruitful. Whatever we need in this journey to accomplish his purpose, he will supply. When we are hurt by the aggression of the world, he comes with his comfort. When we are disappointed by people or society or environment that we find ourselves, he comes to encourage. All oh, so that we will not fall short in the assignment he has called us to fulfill. Pope George, I'm convinced what the Lord has called us to do. All that we need, He has made available. The place of our own is there somewhere. As we align with Him, we will discover it, we will enter it, and we will continue in our assignment to bring hope to all. Nothing is going to stop us, irrespective of how small we call ourselves. Sometimes in our meeting, we say, as a small church, we are doing this. I say, we are not a small church. Because our God is not a small God. Yeah, we will correct ourselves. Say, yes, as a church, you will do this. All that you need to abide on to every good work, He is faithful to supply. He is faithful to supply. Ours is the final work, please, the Lord. Galatians 5. 5 verse 16 from verse 16 it says, so I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want can I pause there the flesh comes to hinder us from answering this call to be fruitful. The flesh is with us. It's in contrast to what the Spirit expects of us. But the interesting thing is that the Spirit is stronger than the flesh. When we link up and conscious of the operation of the Spirit in our life, we will overcome the opposition of the flesh, but is there. Whenever we let go of the influence of the Spirit, the prompting of the Spirit, the leading of the Spirit, the empowerment of the Spirit, the flesh takes over. But we ought not to allow it. And in verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, interestingly I put a fruit there, so that we say that it is one fruit. So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. What that tells me is that when I'm connected with the Spirit, when I'm linked with the divine, when the Father is being my gardener, this is the fruit that flow from me. The flesh will not have a place. Though it's still there, but the flesh, the, the, the spirit will overrun the flesh. Then, out of my life, the fruitfulness that will be, that will be seen will be all that is in the fruit of the spirit. Because I have it. You have it. I go to it again. Love. Love for one another. Love for the Lord. Love for His calling for us. Love for the assignment. Joy. Doing it with joy. Bible says, even count it all joy when you are facing so much temptation. Oh, we are doing it with joy, knowing that He that has called us is faithful. Knowing that he has supplied the strength. Knowing that he is there. Even when the storm comes, he will calm the storm. Or we will work on it like Peter did. Amen? Amen? That inspires our joy. 
Some of them might be, be saying that, wow, look at what this brother is going to, look at what this sister is going to, and she still all smile, he still all smile. It's, not, it's just because of that joy. It goes beyond what circumstances can bring. It is what he brings. Joy, peace, even in the midst of the turbulence, forbearance, bearing with one another, patience, that's what patience, kindness, being kind. Some define kindness is the law of a little acts. Maybe little encouragement, little commendation. Oh dear brother, that's a lovely shirt you are wearing. Little things, kindness. Someone is, you know, um, um, in need. Maybe you don't, you can say you don't have enough. You share what you have. It's still inspired out of love. Showing kindness. Being faithful in your calling, faithfulness. Gentle in dealing with one another and dealing with situation. And self control. Self control still, you know, comes out of putting the flesh in check. Self control. These are part of the fruitfulness that ought to be seen in our lives. As children of God, as those that believe that we've been called to be fruitful, as those that are connected with the vine and the Father is the gardener, as those that are set out to go and represent Jesus in this society. Verse 24 says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desire. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We keep in step with the Spirit. It means that we know where the Spirit leads. We act how the Spirit leads. And brothers and sisters, this is not, how do I put it? It's not mystery. It's not mysticism because we mention Spirit. It's just the gentle prompting of the Lord in confirmation with his word and we act on it. It just on a nutshell. That's it. The prompting of the Lord based on his word. Bible said the Spirit of God bears witness in our spirit that we are children of God. He bears that witness that this is what we ought to do in this situation. Ask is just to obey, to align. And when we do that, we'll see a change, or we'll see the fruit in these three main areas, as I round up. The first thing we'll notice is that our behavior and character will be different, which is bearing that fruit of the Spirit. The next thing, our commitment to our service to God in the church, towards one another, then our witnesses, our witness to others outside of the church and in the community. These are, I believe, two key areas that our fruitfulness ought to be seen, ought to be seen as those that have been called of the Lord. And the good thing is that as we do this, He has already assured that whatever you ask, He will give. Whatever you ask. He knows what you need anyway. You place that desire on your heart to trust him to give it. That's your prayer. You are bringing that prayer because you trust him to respond in the supply of what you know you need to fulfill your call for your life. Remember, he chose you. You did not choose him. He appointed you and set you and set us to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever we ask of the Father, that's in verse 16 of the John 15 we read earlier. That whatever we ask in his name, the Father will give to us. Finally, this is my prayer, which is Colossians, which is a Paul's prayer or letter to the Colossians from verse 1. Colossians 1 from verse 9 says, For this reason, since the day we heard about your faith, we have not stopped praying for you. 
we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. We need the knowledge of his will to be fruitful. Verse 10. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to the glorious might, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. He has qualified you for what he has called you to do. And this is my prayer for us this morning. For us as a church. And I believe as we also pray this prayer, we will also see the answer of it or see us live it out and his will will be accomplished in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we pray? Now I have to worship the back. Lord, we thank you. For though we did not choose you, you chose us. And you appointed us to go and bear fruit. Lord, we thank you that you also committed to prune us so that we will be even more fruitful. Therefore, Lord, our prayer this morning in line with Paul's letter to the Colossians that, Lord, you will fill us with the knowledge of your will through wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. That we will live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing you, Lord, in every way. Lord, that we will bear fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to your glorious might, so that we may have great endurance and patience. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that we will be joyful even as we respond to this call. Knowing that you, O oh Lord, has qualified us to share in this inheritance. And Lord, we just thank you for it. Lord, we pray that this truth of your word will sink in. And we will be committed to act in line with it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone here, for us as a church, Lord, that we will bear fruit in every good work. We'll be fruitful in whatever we lay our hand to do. The Bible says, whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper. Because it's the one strengthening us. And Lord, we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, I, I ask that in any area that we are struggling, in any area that we are failing repeatedly, in any area that we have believed a lie, that this morning, that you, O oh God, will deliver us from them. You will strengthen us to overcome them. In Jesus' name. That our experiences from today, henceforth, will align to bearing fruit in every good one. It will align with the power of the Holy Spirit to do that which pleases Him. And for us as a church, we accomplish it. Your purpose for us, bringing hope to all. I will say thank you. 
Thank you for this morning. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for reminding us of the assurance of answered prayer when we are connected with you. I will say thank you. Thank you. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand up one more time as we seal this message? That the battle belongs to the Lord, whatever comes our path. We stay connected to Him. We remain in Him. Let's see what God can do.
Hallelujah. Dear Father, and our God, we just thank you. Indeed, the battle belongs to you. Though we see the battle, Lord, you see our victory because you are the one fighting. And we say thank you. Thank you for fighting our battle. Thank you for calling us unto fruitfulness, Lord. We'll respond to this as we believe your word and we'll go forth to see fruitfulness in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Even as we connect with one another, doing teas and coffee, Lord, we thank you because you are still in our midst and you are causing our conversation to bring about your will and your purpose in each of us, O Lord. Let your name be glorified. May God bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He grant you peace, even as you enter this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.